I have some very interesting information I want to share with you related to synthetic vitamins. From my viewpoint, synthetic vitamins should not be taken on a regular basis for increasing your health. Now, if you're taking them for a detoxification program, that's something completely different. But taking them on a regular basis, month after month after month, could create some problems. So we're going to talk about why. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because 98% of all vitamins sold are made synthetically. And the question is, are they the same as natural vitamins? And the answer is no, because just because it's similar does not make it identically the same. That's like saying an artificial flavoring is exactly the same as a natural flavoring. It's not. 90% of all the ascorbic acid or synthetic version of vitamin C is, comes from China. And the regulation of what you're getting might not be at the standards that you really need as well, especially since vitamin C is made from GMO corn with uh, other chemicals, other solvents. Now, ideally, the best way to get your nutrients is through food, nutrient-dense foods, but it's very difficult to find foods with all of the nutrients that you need. But the other thing to know is that your own microbes in your gut make vitamins. Now, the actual form of a synthetic vitamin versus a natural vitamin is different. Now, I don't want to get into the complexities of synthetic vitamins, but when you have synthetic vitamins, some of that vitamin is in a different form. So when it goes to your body, like a lock and a key, it's not going to fit. So a good portion of that vitamin is going to be wasted. So the absorption rate or the bioavailability of a synthetic vitamin is, is lower. And this is why you see the synthetic vitamins in massive amounts, like 11,000% of your RDAs. And so a lot of that's going to be passing out through your urine unless it's fat soluble. And with synthetic vitamins, you don't have all the cofactors that normally come with a vitamin in nature. Vitamins in nature are complexes and they have a lot of helper molecules. They don't come in this industrial isolated fractionated part. They come in this synergistic complexity of a lot of different parts, which includes like they might have a trace mineral part of that vitamin. They'll have other vitamins that help the absorption. And one reason for this is because let's just take antioxidants. When an antioxidant donates its electron to a free radical, which is basically something that has that's unpaired. In other words, it, it's missing an electron. So the antioxidant donates this electron to make this free radical stable. Well, now that antioxidant becomes a free radical because now it's missing an electron. So it has to borrow electron from a friend or neighbor antioxidant. So if you don't have a network of antioxidants, you can basically turn your antioxidants into free radicals. So this is why mother nature always comes in a, a group uh, of antioxidants and associated helper molecules. Now, the other really big problem with the synthetic vitamins is that they have residual traces of some of the solvents, uh, chemical compounds like chloroform, petroleum, acetate, glyphosate, which is an herbicide, and uh, even hexane, which is a solvent. But in nature, you're not going to find that at all. Now, the thing with vitamins is they come in both fat-soluble forms and water-soluble forms. So if you took a high amount of a water-soluble synthetic vitamin, the extra would be eliminated through your kidneys. But if it's a fat-soluble vitamin, it's not going to be eliminated very easily. It's going to get stuck in your fat cells. And this is why there's uh, some pretty major side effects when you take synthetic fat-soluble vitamins. So if a mother is taking synthetic vitamin A, there's a risk for that child of having a birth defect. There's some data on synthetic vitamin E and premature death. And then folic acid, which is different than the natural version, folate, increasing your risk of getting cancer. Then you have uh, vitamin C, okay? I'm talking about scorbic acid. There's a study that I'll put down below that shows that it decreases the muscle mitochondria biogenesis. So you're going to make less mitochondria. So you're going to have less training efficiency. But I will say that there's also some positive benefits of taking synthetic vitamin C in the form of ascorbate injected 
for cancer. Now, I'm not recommending this, but there's just some interesting data to show that uh, it can help kill cancer cells because it can turn into hydrogen peroxide in your blood and kill the cancer. Now, again, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just showing you that there is studies that show there's benefits of synthetic vitamins. But even folic acid in prenatals can decrease the risk of getting neural uh, tube defects. So that would be one benefit, but there's side effects of increasing your risk for cancer. So there's pros and cons, but there's way more pros when you do the natural whole food concentrates. Now with synthetic vitamins, they add a lot of additional things in there. They'll add uh, additives, preservatives, flavorings, colorings. So let me just read you the ingredient list on probably one of the most popular, highest selling synthetic vitamins on the market. Okay, it has modified cornstarch. I don't know why they put modified cornstarch in a vitamin. Maltodextrin, which is a sugar, polydextrose, ascorbic acid, vitamin A acetate, which is synthetic. Then they add yellow six lake as a coloring agent. And then some of the minerals are in oxide forms, which are not the best absorbed uh, minerals. If possible, you want the plant-based minerals or minerals that are absorbed a lot better. Then they add calcium carbonate, which is basically rocks and ascorbic acid. Now, of course, I'm not biased in my own vitamins, but I'll show you the, the uh, vitamin C ingredients in mine. Organic freeze-dried acerola cherry fruit, organic freeze-dried strawberry fruit, organic freeze-dried acai berry fruit, organic freeze-dried blueberry fruit. And let's talk about my keto energy product. Vitamin A from carrots, vitamin C from blueberry, cranberry, and strawberry. Vitamin D from shiitake mushrooms, vitamin E from tomatoes, vitamin K1 from spinach, vitamin B2 from broccoli. You see, especially with the B vitamins like vitamin B1, B2, they make it from coal tar, acetone, and ammonia versus the natural version can come from garlic or nutritional yeast. Vitamin B2 could be from holy basil. Vitamin A could be from cod liver oil. But the problem with natural vitamins is it's more difficult to extract. It's more expensive, but you need a lot less of it because it's way more bioavailable and it has a lot less side effects. So I think one way to identify synthetic vitamins is to look at the RDAs and the back of the label. And if it's in very high amounts, uh, then you know it's probably synthetic. So anyway, I wanted to give you some basic information about the difference between synthetic and natural vitamins. And if you can go for the natural vitamins or even better yet, eat foods that are nutrient dense. Now for more information on foods that are nutrient dense, this is the next video you need to watch right here.